Hello everyone and welcome back to more Aston Villa Thriller at the Villa here on FM22 and this save is just, well if this is how FM22 is going to go then it should be quite enjoyable because it's just so weird. I don't even really know what to say, we are on course to qualify not only for Europe but for the Champions League in our first season with Aston Villa which makes very little sense to me but anyway um, here's how it's gone since last time. The excellent wins over Brentford and Brighton. Well, we've continued in a similar vein of form. We have, for the first time in the save, dropped points at home. Disgraceful, I know. A nil-nil with Burnley. Um, very frustrating. We should really have won the game. We had lots of chances to, but we didn't. But that happens sometimes. But we immediately follow that up by beating Chelsea 3-1 as well. We've beaten Manchester City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Tottenham, and now Chelsea, it's quite quite good really, disconcerting but good. Another great performance, we were tuning up very early on through Mings and Ings, that combination again, Havertz got a goal back, but Sanson sealed the three points once again, we beat Watford very very late penalty from Danny Ings to win that one, then our cup success continued as we were knocked out of the FA Cup in the third round by Leighton Orient, uh, again the second string didn't do a very good job. The two players in question, mostly to blame, Schlager in goal and Ollie Watkins, who was having a dreadful season. But we then bounced back with Mings and Ings once again on the score sheet as we beat Leicester again 2-1. To continue our fantastic unbeaten run in the Premier League, anyway, uh, we're in January. We haven't made any signings. We haven't made any sales apart from a couple of youth players who I don't think we're really going to amount to all that much. We have got some players missing, though, of course, because it's the African Cup of Nations. So Traore and Kamba and Trezeguet, who's now back to full fitness, are all not here. So hopefully hopefully he doesn't get injured again for Egypt. So we're a little bit thin on the ground. Um, we've got some players getting a bit unhappy. Courtney House wants to leave. He's, he's expecting to leave in the, this window. His contract's up at the end of the season, so he can just go on a free, I suppose. I'm not too concerned. We haven't really made any signings. Um, I would kind of like to in some ways, like some pre-contract signings. There's a lot of players available for free, or like who who were available free. Andreas Christensen, we could have signed potentially Frank Kessie, Kylian Mbappe available for free, but uh, not not he he didn't want to come here. But our wage budget is a bit low, and what with the FFP situation, I have not done anything. We don't really need to do anything. We have had some interesting players, as you can see, Esri Konsa and Tyrone Mings, both bids from Newcastle, trying to flash their cash now, but they're not getting either of them. Neither of them is particularly bothered about going Newcastle are now spending money. Uh, Lodi from Atletico Madrid for 51 million. Dodo from Shakhtar for 27.5 million. And they've signed Carlos Feo as well, which is just a, that's a great signing really, isn't it? But you never know what might present itself in the next few days. But we're going to be playing Everton today, followed by Tottenham, two you know, solid Premier League teams. Everton in sixth. Tottenham are having a much worse season down in 12th, but they're doing better than they were previously. Having Nuno now been sacked, they've replaced him with Marcelo Bielsa, which is... It's a pretty, pretty big coup of an appointment, really. As we continue our seemingly relentless pursuit to Champions League qualification, we are in third place after 22 matches. 50 points on the board. We are seven points clear of Leeds, who are still doing really well in fourth. Um, but most importantly, we are 15 points clear of Chelsea in eighth place. 15 points at this stage is crazy. Whether it lasts, I don't know, but I, I, yeah, we're certainly on course for at least Europa Conference, you would think, if we can keep up, unless we have a complete total collapse, which is entirely possible. Okay, team for this one then is going to be Marseille's in goal, of course. Defence is still fit and firing for now. Target, Mings, Concert and Cash. Concert has just come back from a little, little bit of illness, but he's okay for this one. Douglas Louise is going to be playing in the absence of Nkamba with Zakaria and Sanson. John McGinn is starting to complain about not playing football which, I mean, I'd like to keep him, theoretically, but he's been playing so badly that I kind of don't care too much. Uh, Leon Bailey's on the right-hand side. He just he went off to play for Jamaica for some reason, for, for like, randomly a match. And apparently, Emi Martinez is going to play for Argentina, randomly, for two matches, even though neither of these are recognised international breaks, in my opinion. But there we go. Uh, but he's back for this one. Buendia's on the left-hand side as well, with Danny Ings, of course, up front. One thing that has happened which has been very irritating is that quite a few players are unhappy that I apparently quote backed down to Junior Sambia by giving him more game time which he wanted. He, he was upset about not playing um, except I didn't because he played one game in the period that he wanted to play more games 
I never spoke to him directly anyway. And he just decided that, yeah, he was all right and he was going to drop his issue. And then as a result of that, apparently half the squad got upset, which makes no sense. But there we are. Okay, then Everton home system is obviously what we're going to be using. Our home record is ridiculously good. Burnley aside, keep it going. Make me proud. Get three more points. The tunnel interview question was, what's the secret behind your good home record? I don't know. It's, it's just This is just what seems to happen. Ings whips a ball across. Beautiful ball. To Emmy Buendia needs to get in the box himself now to, to finish that one off. Louise, slide wall pass back to Buendia, whips it in, looking for Bailey, knocks it down for Ings, and Ings scores. What That was one of the best goals I've ever seen on FM. That was wonderful. We're not even two minutes in. The pass from Ings initially, Buendia gives it to Louise, gets it back. I mean, that that just ridiculous. Ings gets it through two players. Pickford can do nothing. 1-0. It's not even Pickford playing, it's Begovic. Goodness me, Cash to Zakaria. Beautiful touch down to Leon Bailey, stretching the defence. Cross in, it's headed away by Coleman, but only as far as Matt Target with a first to every ball at the moment. Here's Buendia, back to Douglas Louise, who's got a chance in the team in the absence of Encamba to really impress. Buendia cuts inside the field. Zakaria, edge of the area is Bailey. Ings knocking it around, beautiful stuff. Beautiful one-touch football. Who's going to take it on and put a cross in? Target. Back to Sanson. This is very patient play. Luis, he, he's not patient. Just lashes it. Absolutely lashes it. And Begovic sort of puts his hands up in a scared fashion to parry it away for a corner, which Wendia will take. And Mings can't quite get there. He's surely going to be on the score sheet because it's basically Mings and Ings who run the show. Target. Good control in front of the goal as we look to work from the back. Here is Tyrone Mings to Sanson. Beautiful football so far, it really is. I mean, it's like watching, it's like watching, well, a team that know how to play football, which is, is good because that's the sport we're playing. Prime Barcelona, prime Liverpool. Probably going too far to say that. I'm just rambling. It's just nice to see. Ings is out on the left to target. There's Buendia across to Sanson. He's hit the post. It should have been 2-0. It's not. Leon Bailey's very tired, which is, you know, understandable. He's come from Jamaica, but I'm not really sure why he's going to Jamaica randomly in January. It's not the Gold Cup or anything like that. When Dia across to Bailey, Bailey makes it too, or does he? Is he offside? I do appreciate it, but not every single goal that goes like this is ruled offside. That's a good feature. VAR sometimes giving goals is good, not on this occasion, but... It, it does seem that most goals seem to go to VAR. In this case, he is offside. So that's fine. I'm not quite sure how he moved so quickly. We've got the lead. It's still 1-0. I would like it to be more. We should really be doing a bit better. I've, I've just said the scoreboard reflects our dominance. It doesn't really, does it? We should be 3-0 up. It's only 1-0. But still, we've seen little to nothing from everything so far. Buendia with the corner in. And Mings, I thought that was in. I thought it was in. Right, we're probably going to have to take Bailey off here because he is obviously getting tired. Unfortunately, of course, Traore not here to come on in his stead. So we're going to move Wendia over to the right-hand side and bring on El Ghazi. That's probably the sensible thing to do. Can we see this one out? We're controlling it so far, but still needing that second goal, really, I think, to make things a bit safer. Ideally, three goals or more. El Ghazi apparently on side. Sanson levers it in. That's more like it. Morgan Sanson who has been quietly, well, he's replaced John McGinn in the side. It's as simple as that. Him and Zakaria have eliminated the need for John McGinn in this team, which is unfair on John McGinn, perhaps, but his performances have never been good. Whenever he's played, he's been bad. Sanson, great strike, top corner, 2-0. Now Buendia's getting a bit tired, which is a bit of an issue. We don't really have many other options on the bench. We might have to bring on McGinn, actually, and move Sanson over to the the flanks potentially here is Ings good control from him off to Sanson the two goal scorers combining well along with everyone else across to Konza just it's just it's just so measured and confident one touch passing taking more touch when we need to running when we need to as Ings gets another one it's three 21 goals now for Danny Ings and that's all in the Premier League because he didn't play neither of the cup games 21 goals for Danny Ings and we're only in January that's very good isn't it that is very good Everton being torn to pieces they've done nothing today 
it's going to be three more points. Taking Buendia off for Ollie Watkins, who is just... Him and McGinn, I would not have marked them as the two most disappointing players this season. But they have been. They absolutely have. El Ghazi stretching the defence target short to Sanson. Back to El Ghazi. It's, it was a chance maybe for Watkins. He didn't really get any sort of connection with it. Into the closing stages, there's there's seconds left. Everton now actually have a highlight. It's been a torrid display from Rafa Benitez's men. Considering they're having a good season, they're in sixth place. We've absolutely destroyed them. They could get a consolation here, but it's only going to be that. They don't even get that. Martinez clutches it out of the air from Allen, And... Yeah, this has been very, very good. Like, it, this is not like a team in the relegation zone or something. Everton were in sixth before this game, and they've done nothing. Absolutely nothing until that final highlight there. 3 0. Very confident, very controlled, very clinical. Again, with this kind of question, what are your thoughts on Norwich line of the Premier League this season? They're in 10th. We're, we're managing Aston Villa. And we're in third. Surely that's the bigger story. Well, I wasn't planning on doing any business, but uh, Courtney House, obviously he wanted to leave, um, was quite desperate to leave, and his contract's obviously up, so I figured we might as well get some kind of money for him. And 1.2 million is what we're going to get for him from Crystal Palace. Thanks very much. We've moved very quickly to replace him. There's not really much point in getting someone in as the sort of third, fourth choice centre-back permanently in January, really, is there? So we, there's a lot of players available for loan. Why anyone else isn't just going for them, I don't know. But Trevor Chalobah, is going to be joining us on loan for the rest of the season from Chelsea. He's got 10k a week less in wages. Honestly, everyone's kicking off now. John McGinn, he came to me again. Danny Ying sorted him out. Ashley Young's now upset because he wants to play, but I managed to just point out the fact that Matt Target is much better than him, and he was okay with that. Sambi is kicking off again. I, ugh, I, what, I'm whatever. No one's going. I'm not making. We're not getting rid of you now. Like, just wait to the summer. You never know. Matt, Matty Cash could break his leg in five minutes' time and then you'll be playing every game till the end of the season. Just grow up. If I was being paid £25,000 a week to basically twiddle my thumbs, I wouldn't I wouldn't be complaining about it. But some of these computer-generated footballers, honestly... Right, as said, Martinez is off on international duty for some reason. I think it's World Cup qualifiers. Must be because, they, because of COVID, the fixture list... I don't know. So Schlager's going to be playing for the first time in the Premier League. He has not... Obviously, we had both games he's played, we've lost. So that doesn't bode well. Chalaba comes straight onto the bench as well. He may well replace Conser at some point. I don't know. But he's certainly better than Twan Zebi. And uh, we also have got the welcome return of Trezor Gay for the first time this season following his lengthy injury layoff. He looks, he looks good. Certainly a good option in the absence of Bertrand Traore. Safe to say Spurs this season hasn't gone to plan, but has. But there's been a definite improvement now that Bielsa is in charge. So, and any side with Son, any side with Harry Kane is going to be uh, going to be a bit of a test. I've not changed the tactic. I think we can change it in here. We can. Good. Right, we can. Um, I'm going to go to... I mean, do we say... Which one do we go with? Do we say we're better than them? I mean, we are better than them. I think we'll go with this. We go, we're going to go with this. It, maybe, maybe it's a risk. We can always make a switch, but that's what we're going to go with. Um, I expect nothing but a win. But it's, I don't know. This might be a mistake. We might need to go for the middle one, just purely because Bielsa. But at the same time, they're a mid-table team. We are better than them. We should be beating them. So we'll go with the third tactic. 15 minutes in, and it's Spurs on the attack. Emerson with a cross in. Son is there, and Schlager with a good, confident stop. That's going to that's gonna help him out, I think. A bit of reassurance. Can, how is his distribution? It was pretty good when I signed him, and that's not a bad effort. He did try, and he tried to find Wendy, but it didn't quite work out. And Tottenham are now looking to come forward, or not, because Zakaria intercepts well. Ings on the spin, finds Wendy racing forwards, and it's not the best effort. You'd like that to be the other way around. Wendia feeding Ings. Well, Danny Ings has a bit of a knock. It's a bruised ankle. He should be okay. Given the alternative is bringing on Ollie Watkins, I think we'll leave him out there. Harry Kane's in though, and Harry Kane hits the crossbar. Schlager, he, he raised a hand. Well, it's half time and it's nil nil. Um, it's been quite an even game. We've had more shots on target, but Tottenham's XG is better, presumably because of just Harry Kane being Harry Kane, I guess. Um, He's been unlucky so far. It's not been, it's not been bad. 
Free kick from Buendia, good position. It's not far away, hits the woodwork. Good effort from the former Norwich City man. Uh, Bailey's not having a great game, so we might make a switch at some point. Possibly Trezeguet might be an option. In fact, we're making the switch now. We're bringing him, in, bringing him on. Trezeguet, he's more comfortable on the left, but then so is Al Ghazi, who we'll probably bring on as well. I want to see I want to see the Egyptian in action. Our own Egyptian winger, he's not quite Mohamed Salah, but he's still pretty good. Son's in, Son scored. He looked well offside, but it's hard to tell this year. It's, you never know until the thing comes up. This, this this time on, on FM21, anything like this would be disallowed, and this one has been. But yeah, it's, it's just not a certainty anymore. Pass from Kane, I mean, he's absolutely miles off. Did we even need VAR for that? He's an absolute country mile off. Um, we're not playing especially well here. So my, my thinking is we maybe switch up to the middle one, which obviously involves um, higher tempo, and we don't counter-press. I'm going to do it. Well, I'm going to do it as there's potentially a goal here. Kane goes close again. Schlager was backpedaling. Right, we've made the switch. So it's a more cautious approach, which perhaps is probably sensible considering that it's mostly been Tottenham on the attack. Nothing seems to particularly be happening though. Buendia is, is tired. He's having a good game, but we're going to take him off for El Ghazi. Save his legs. Morgan Sanson as well. We will give a chance to redeem himself to Mr. John McGinn and see how they get on in the closing stages. Still nil-nil, heading to the closing stages. We've not really been at the races, so I'm kind of fine with a point here against a renewed Spurs. We've we've kept them at bay. It was a good defensive performance. Bit of luck as well. It's nil-nil. Not our finest hour, but we, you know, we weren't awful, and it's a creditable point. Apparently, we proved a lot of people wrong by avoiding defeat out there against a team who are 10 places lower than us in the table. I'm not sure how that really works, but if it means everyone's happy, we'll take it and get out of there. So there we go, the run continues. We are still in third place. We're now six points clear of fourth place, which is now Arsenal rather than Leeds. We are 10 points clear of fifth. We are 16 points clear of eighth. Crikey. It might actually be on. It might actually be on. 14 matches left to play and Aston Villa could be in Europe next season. Obviously, a team who have previously won the European Cup, so it's not out of the question, just not really of late particularly. Anyway, we'll be back next time for, well, I think we need, we're going to do one more episode before the end of the season, and I'm thinking Norwich West Ham or West Ham Arsenal, that kind of bit, probably actually Arsenal because they're kind of with us in the fight for the top four. So West Ham Arsenal, and then we're at the end of the season already. Brighton and Burnley will be coming up after that but that is gonna be it for today thank you very much for watching leave a like don't forget to subscribe as well and continue watching this crazy crazy season and crazy start to fm22 more stuff coming on the channel very soon as well thanks for watching and i'll see you next time